Hey everybody, I'm Davey. And last month we spent over $3 million on Facebook ads. Last week we showed you how to shoot winning content for Facebook ads. Today we're gonna to show you how to actually set it up. We're gonna start right from the beginning. So if you're a beginner, continue watching. I'm also gonna share some of the fundamentals as well. So even if you're running Facebook ads, you're still gonna get something out of it. Just one disclaimer, I'm never gonna sell you a course. There's no hidden fee here and I'm gonna keep it very, very simple. I'm also gonna show you how to hire someone to help you with your Facebook ads because I see so many people go wrong in that area. And then next week, we're gonna have a more advanced session. We're gonna change the structure up a bit and look deeper into the data. Facebook ads can be really confronting, especially for new people in the industry. There's so many different targeting options and ways to spend. I'm gonna show you the simplest way possible today. It's gonna to just be a few clicks and then you're gonna be up and away. Basically, you're going to be spending a very small amount of budget and what that's gonna tell you is is Facebook ads going to work for you? It's just gonna give you that small indication and then you can actually go hire someone or justify spending a lot more time on learning it yourself. Action. Facebook ads is actually one of the only platforms that you need to learn in the early stages. It doesn't matter if you're a brand owner, a new entrepreneur, drop shipping, it actually has the golden triangle of what we're looking for in a digital platform. Unlike lots of other platforms out there which have low quality or not enough data to work with, you try to scale spend up and your results just start coming down rapidly. This is great for you as a marketer because you can just learn one platform and then when the next platform comes along, you can apply those learnings to it. I like to think of Facebook as our driving platform. It's kind of like the thermometer of our brands. If we can spend a lot on Facebook, it means everything's going very well. Google, all of these other platforms which are kind of complementary, they're layering on and ensuring our customer acquisition costs are great. First, some truths. You need a great product to make Facebook work. Second, you need good picture ads. You can't just use really poor images. Third, you need a good landing page. Where are you sending this traffic? It needs to be optimized for mobile conversion. We can get into that another time. One thing to note is Facebook changes a lot. If you looked at the videos three years ago, it would just be completely different. One growing trend is that accounts are getting simpler. Facebook's making it actually easier for new people on their platform to run ads. They're trying to take away control from the advertisers so the machine learning can take place. They wanna put the ads in the most optimal place for you. This trend will continue until it's basically a one click setup. But for now, there are a few things that you need to do to tell Facebook to push it in the right direction. You'll see a ton of different ways that people launch ads. Truth is, a lot of them are gurus trying to make overcomplicate things and create fear that you're doing it wrong. Honestly, by the time you really learn that method, it's probably outdated and there's gonna be a new one. Just focus on giving Facebook what it needs. All right, so I'm gonna do a beginner's tutorial now. We're gonna set up a campaign. I'm gonna show you how to also set up the website right and the tracking. If you're more advanced, skip until later into the video. We're gonna breeze through this really quickly because honestly, it does change a lot. Let's do it. So basically, I'm just gonna set up a new Shopify for this tutorial. Alrighty, so now we're in Shopify. You need to come into online store and preferences. This is gonna be where you can set up your Facebook pixel. This has changed just recently. Shopify's tried to make it easier. You click set up Facebook and add sales channel. Now, you can essentially connect your business manager. I obviously already have one, but if you don't, go to business.facebook and set up a new account. You wanna make sure that you use a business manager. You don't wanna run ads through your personal Facebook or just boost ads. That's not good. We wanna set it up correctly. We also wanna make sure that nobody else sets up our Pixel or business manager. It needs to be your personal account if it's your business. Otherwise, there'll be a big mess when you try to transfer it over to you. I'm just gonna connect one of my existing business managers. Now, we're just gonna go through these prompts and connect the correct business manager. Make sure you select your correct ad account. You can connect an existing ad account if you already have one set up. Alternatively, you can click create new. So I'm just gonna connect it to the ad account for this tutorial. Accept the terms and conditions, then come back here and click done. Now we're gonna make sure that we connect the correct page. Take your time with this process. Enable customer data sharing and the country that you're gonna be marketing towards. Once you've selected the target country, accept the terms and conditions. Finish that up. In this process, you can basically either link an existing pixel or create a new pixel. A pixel is really important to have set up correctly on your website. Shopify makes it very easy. Basically, it's telling Facebook what the customer is doing on your website, and then you can optimize your budget to that activity. So this Shopify is all set up. We can actually come here 
and view the store. This little plugin here is really important. It's called the Facebook Pixel Helper. Basically, it's gonna come up and give us a tick if it's set up correctly. Alrighty, now we're gonna come back to business.facebook. Your ad account should be here. You can just click into it and we can set up our first campaign. Again, I'm gonna show you an absolute beginner setup. So we're gonna click create ad and we're gonna click conversions. This is where a lot of people will go wrong. You wanna do conversions because we're looking for purchases. Unless you're a really advanced marketer that's doing some kind of lead based magnet or something else fancy, then conversions is gonna be 90% of what you do. Then you're gonna come down here and you're gonna name your campaign. Bear with me, you don't need to understand it yet, but we're actually gonna use the, the number one. Then we're just gonna name the type of campaign it is, which is conversions. To help you remember, we're just gonna say something unique about the campaign. For this one, it's just gonna be the thicky content. The ad set is generally the targeting that we put on it. So if you're using like an interest-based targeting, you'd name this here. And then you can go into a little bit more detail to make sure that you understand what you're actually launching. Again, for this example, we're keeping it very simple. So I'm just gonna use the term broad. Then for ad, I'm just gonna say interview hairdresser. Alrighty, that should load up now. This can be really overwhelming for beginners. Basically up here, you've got your campaign, you've got your ad set, and then you've got your ads underneath it. You're gonna click on broad and have a play around here. You can come into here and make sure that you click on your correct pixel. Next is really important. We're gonna set up the conversion event. This is what I was talking about before. We wanna get purchases. There is sometimes scope to use something like add to cart and Facebook will probably actually push you to do that because that's gonna provide them more data. In this tutorial, I'm trying to teach you how to test if your product is actually worth the time of Facebook. So we're just gonna go through with a purchase event and see if we can get any. Next, we're gonna scroll down to budget and schedule. This really depends on how much money you've got to work with. You do need to give Facebook a little bit of money to work with, but this is a common question. How much do I have to spend on ads? A basic rule of thumb is that you need to spend three times your average order value to even get any meaningful data. That means if you're selling a product for $300, you may have to spend up to $900 to actually validate the product. But if you're selling a product for like $50, you're only gonna have to spend $150. The budget and schedule is also gonna depend on how many ad sets you create because if you could set up five ad sets at $20 each, that's gonna be $100. For this tutorial, we're only gonna set up one campaign, one ad set, and then three ads. This is the simplest possible way, and you can still get results. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna set my daily budget to $100 because I'm quite confident in the creative and the offer considering we're already selling it. So now we're coming down to audiences. This is where you can have a lot of fun. But again, it does add complexities when you're trying to do interest-based targeting. I'm gonna go into that in a little bit. But for this, we're actually gonna do a broad audience. So we've got the location as being Australia, 18 to 65. There's really no targeting going on here. This is giving me a potential reach of 20 million people, which is actually quite optimal for Facebook. If I targeted the entire US, it's gonna be over 300 million people. And that is going to be too broad. You may need to use interests to scale that down, so keep watching. Then we're gonna come down to placements. Stop overcomplicating things. Don't click manual placements. Facebook knows best, just keep it auto. Now we're gonna go into the ad. We obviously shot the content last week. We're gonna upload that. You're gonna select your Instagram page and Facebook page here. If that's not linked, you may need to go into your settings and make sure that it is. There's lots of different ways that we can actually launch this creative. So now we're gonna create the ads. We're gonna unselect dynamic formats and creative and we're going to click single image or video. This is going to allow us to upload our creatives. We're going to add our video that we shot last week and we're also going to write our primary text, headline and description. If you don't know what this is, you need to go to Power Ads Buy or any of the other tools that I've suggested or even go to your competitor's ads library. Learn what they're writing. Just like your Facebook video, you need to make sure that your text is digestible on Facebook. What this often looks like is a hooky first sentence and then there's gaps in between their lines so it's very easy to read. I'm just gonna transfer some of our successful ad copy over. I'm also gonna make the call to action shop now. Next, make sure you put in your exact website URL, the one that you've just set up the pixel on. Then we're just gonna click publish. And there you go, it's that easy. You've got your first ad set up. While we are keeping this very simple with one campaign and one ad set, we do wanna add a few variations of ads. This is especially if you are a beginner, maybe you haven't exactly nailed the creative. It's just gonna increase your success that you're gonna find something that Facebook likes. So we're just gonna click duplicate and duplicate it in our existing campaign. Now all we need to really do is change over this content. 
We can add a new video, add a new image, and even change the copy. I would definitely suggest changing the name of this ad so you actually understand what's going on. Once you add this in, basically Facebook is going to start spending a bit of money across these ads, and then it's going to designate which one it prefers. That one's successfully published. I'm just gonna add one more ad to this ad set. All right, what's gonna happen next is Facebook's gonna approve the ads, providing that it's not against their terms and conditions. Then it's gonna slowly start allocating that daily spend. You wanna start watching the actual data coming through Facebook. You're probably wondering, what am I exactly looking for? You need to understand your break-even customer acquisition cost, which is basically the profit margin left over after you've sent the product to the customer. There's actually a lot of different stages of data that you can look at in Facebook. This will actually tell you if it's your creative that's not working, your website that's not converting, or your product just isn't right for Facebook. But for now, at least you've got a campaign set up, spending a little bit of budget, and you might get a couple of sales. So now we're gonna go through a little bit more of an advanced setup. Basically, we're gonna find interests to target. This is gonna make the audiences smaller, which may make Facebook more efficient. It'll also give us more insights going forward who to actually target. One of the coolest ways to find interest to target is actually coming to your competitor's website. I just use one of my brands, for example. Basically, you can come down into the comments section, click on the person, go to their profile, and hit forward slash likes. If they have any likes, they'll all come up here. You can do this 30 to 50 times and get the common interest that people are liking. Then we can go into Facebook and target that or at least an affinity to that. A lot of these interests won't actually be in the ad account. You just gotta be patient or target something similar. Let's just take Hocker 11 for example. Probably not completely relevant for hair care, but it should be fine for this video. We're gonna come back into our ad account. What we're gonna change is things on the ad account level. We're gonna change this ad set name as well because we're not gonna be targeting abroad. We're gonna be targeting Hocker 11. We've got 20 million people here. That's because we're targeting Australia. Watch what happens when I target the United States. Over 260 million people. Even if we're targeting $100 a day, we're still putting a lot of trust in Facebook that it can find the right audience in 260 million people. This can still work, but we're just gonna to try to nudge it in the right direction with interests. So I'm gonna scroll down here into this detailed targeting and I'm gonna add that interest that I was talking about before. It's shown up, which is great. You can see how it's now been narrowed down to 5.4 million people. That's perfect. We're gonna keep all those existing ads and we're just gonna click publish. Now, we're gonna have to repeat this a few times. So we need to make sure that that budget isn't $100. Otherwise, we're gonna spend way over what we're looking to. We're gonna change this to $20 and I'm gonna create five different interest targeting. The next one, for example, I'm just gonna use a more generic niche. We're gonna click duplicate. Make sure this show existing reactions is ticked. Then you're gonna scroll down, remove this Hocker 11, and you're just gonna do something generic. We've got hair products here, that's absolutely fine, super relevant. You can see that this hasn't actually changed. This is because there's this detailed targeting expansion here. I'm just gonna uncheck that and it's gonna narrow it down. To stay organized, make sure you're changing this ad set name to the new interest. This is gonna help you understand which interests you should be targeting in the future and analyze your data. So I'm just gonna change this to hair products. Now, you've noticed that you've got all your existing ads set up. That's good. We want all of the exact same post IDs underneath here. One thing I've noticed is that th this can get very glitchy. So I'm actually gonna force Facebook into picking these existing IDs down here. What that's gonna do is make sure that all the budget is going to these three ads, all the comments, all the engagement. It's really gonna help sales. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click on one of these ads and we can click use existing post. Now you can see that we've selected that exact post. The post ID is here, which should match this one. We can just click publish but I'm actually gonna go through and do it with all the ads. So we're gonna go through and we're just gonna click review and publish all of these ads. The reason why I do this is because there is often this glitch where Facebook will just automatically change the post ID even though there hasn't been really anything changed. Now what I'll just do is duplicate this one and do three more interests. If you're really struggling to find more interests, you can actually just click suggestions and come in here. Facebook will have a lot for you. Don't be afraid to pick some really strange ones. So that's how you had interest to your targeting. If that was overwhelming, it's okay. Facebook is trying to make their system simpler. Even if your plan is to hire someone to do all of this, it is still really important that you understand how to do all of that and also read the data. 
because then you could actually manage your team member that is doing this for you. You can speak their language and hold them accountable to what they're doing. Hiring media buyers is probably the most frequent question that I get from business owners and often successful business owners. And the truth is, it is not easy. I have no one cut rule for recommendations. To summarize your options, you've got Upwork, which can be really hit and miss. You've got hire someone in-house, which is often hard to find, or you've got use an agency, which can go terribly wrong. My recommendations will be based on where you currently are. If it's a brand new product and you're a single founder, definitely do this yourself. It's one of the most important parts of your business. If you're a small or mid-sized business, possibly like a retail store, then you can probably consider running an agency. But the truth is they are really dangerous. A lot of them don't even know what they're doing and they'll just take your money anyway. The best agencies will get so many clients that eventually they just kind of lose interest in you and will stop giving your business enough tension. I thought it'd be helpful if I can give you some quick tips about how to hold these either agencies or Upwork consultants accountable. First and foremost, you need to actually give them targets to hit. If your agency says, we've given you this many impressions, this many likes, this many video views, they're hiding through vanity metrics. It's not helping your business. You need to understand what success looks like and then they need to achieve that. What success probably looks like is sales. You then need to give them return on ad spend or customer acquisition cost targets that they then need to hit. The second really helpful thing is you can actually come into your ad account and check if there's been any activity. You simply select the campaign and you come over here and you click see history. You'll be able to see if they're actually logging in and checking your work. The third red flag is probably if they're not requesting more content. Content is one of the most important inputs to making Facebook ads work. If they're not requesting more content, then chances are they either don't care or they don't understand the importance of it, which is a huge red flag. You need to build positive feedback loops of content and then launching new interests or targeting. Finally, if you're a more advanced Facebook advertiser, spending a fair bit on the platform and they're not layering traffic in cold and hot, as well as doing some great retargeting, they're probably not advanced enough for you and you should look at hiring a better agency or someone in-house. As I've mentioned, one of the main things that can make Facebook ads not work is your website. I'm gonna do a full video on how to set up your Shopify and how to optimize for conversion rate. That'll be coming soon. But for now, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the really simple tutorial we just went through and I'll see you next week. Make sure you subscribe. Is that all right? Did you want me to do it again?